In the wholesale industry, you can be a sniper with your data that you buy. Like, so when we buy data, we're buying absentee owner data, which means I know you own that house and you don't live in it because your taxes go somewhere else. So for a wholesale operation right now with interest rates have doubled, we just buy a ton of absentee owner data. We pop into different markets throughout the US. We use, we do PPC and cold calling, but man, cold calling is, Everyone says it's dead. It is not dead. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs today in the studio. Folks, as always, I got a real treat for you. This time, it's Eric Klein. What's going on, man? Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, you guys don't know Eric Klein? Go follow him at the Eric Klein, just like it sounds. E-R-I-C-C-L-I-N-E, the Eric Klein. Klein basically is a sales expert, entrepreneur, extravaganza, right? Yeah, for and all that. But you, but here, here's the bottom line. Bottom line is like he's not just a sales expert. Like he, he built a company worth about what thirty mil. Yeah, I was getting ready to exit. I had an offer on very first company I ever built. I had a exit uh, offer for one hundred and forty two million for the one hundred percent of the business. How about that? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Isn't that nice? I don't have 142 million though. Did you screw that opportunity up? No, it was- You couldn't close it? It was lawsuits, man. Oh. It was the big guy coming after the little guy. Who? Two two of the largest timeshare developers in the world. Uh, my business model was breaking timeshare contracts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And- uh, Dude, that's funny. They they sell you timeshare and then they sell you how to get out of the timeshare. <laughs> and we were good and at both, it. And both of those are getting rich. It was a great business model. I mean, people are, people don't go and buy a timeshare. They're sold a timeshare. Yeah, but can I ask um, why in the timeshare business do they not follow up? In my opinion, it's kind of a bad product. Because like, they don't need to or they know no one will ever buy afterwards. If they're not buying on, on the seat when they're sitting at the table, they're not buying. See, you're sold that. I'm not. Huh? You're sold that. You believe that. And I've never been in the business, so I might be wrong. You might be right. But here's what I would say. I would say, let's me and you form a little company that goes to these people, because you know them, right? Yeah. That goes to these people in these in this industry and say, look, you're not doing shit with the names, address, and phone numbers of 97%. What's the closing percentage? I don't, on, on signing In that the industry. Up? Yeah. I don't have a clue. Well, I'll, bet you, I'll bet you it's no more than 10%. Well, let's say it's 30 or 40%. I don't care. I want the balance. I want everyone who didn't buy. Right. I want their name, address, and email, and I will call and try to sell them your product again Follow. over the phone, over a Zoom. Yeah. And 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 listen, that's all found money for you, is it not? What but are you, they do, have, they what are you doing with those? Time share. I don't care. It's exactly what your product was. Yeah, yeah. But you're not following up, correct? Well- You're going to not call them, Correct. So I am out of that business, uh, dude. I'm 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 acting like you're the fucking company. Got it. You're not doing anything with the leads, correct? No. no. So why not give them to me? Right. And then I will try to sell them your product, not a product, your product. I'm not going to go outside of your company for this. I'm not going to take your leads and go sell them Wyndham. Right. Okay. Unless it's Wyndham, then I will. But at the end of the day, I like that company. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, like, give me your leads that you're not doing shit with that came through your door, got pitched by your sales team, Didn't and buy. did not convert. Because follow up, I guarantee you, just the following up on those leads. Because right now, there's no follow up in the timeshare business. It's a lot of businesses. There's no follow up. Well, that's true. But yeah. specifically in the timeshare, from what I'm understanding, right. So I say, man, why don't we form a company? Get get those leads diverted to us. We call them, especially you being the right partner, based on what I know about you being the, you know, virtual sales king. How to convert people online? Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Is why not? Why not try and sell them again? conversation would go pretty easily hey eric i see that you saw you and betty saw an opportunity here in las vegas but you didn't take advantage of it i'm calling to see kind of what happened and what made you make that decision right well, i'm just not interested why you know? well again what happened right nine times out of ten when people hear the opportunity 
they naturally freaking do it. So my que- my curiosity is what made you not do it? Right. Why wouldn't you want a vacation all over the globe many times a year? Like I've never heard anyone that declined. Now, now I got an opportunity to sell you again. And if I can't sell you again, what did I lose? Nothing. Right. Now, again, the person making the attempt might have lost something time. But what did the what did the Hiltons lose by nothing. giving me the lead? Nothing. They lost nothing. They, right. they weren't going to call them anyway. But what if they say yes? And I'm so sure that if you gave me 97% of the people that didn't buy, right, I could convert a section of those of course. to buyers. Of course. And make myself millions of dollars selling your product. Right. It's almost like second chance timeshare. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've injuncted myself from that industry. Yeah. Well, didn't you like get in some trouble where you can't even be in that industry? I didn't get in trouble what at all. What happened? We were really good at, at, at getting people out of timeshares is what we were good at. And uh, I, I had that company for almost a decade. Took it literally from, from a bedroom with a stack of paper leads and grew that business uh, in just over nine years to, to doing over $33 million in gross sales. I uh, had an office in Fort Lauderdale where we had a hundred over 150 uh, employees. If I was going to live in Fort, if I was going to live in Florida, Miami, I'd probably live in Lauderdale. Like that seems like a cool little town. It was, it was good. I was there for 12 years. Went down there. I went there one the time. Treatment. I went there one time and I tried to leave yeah. every day for four days. But Fort Lauderdale? Yeah. Really? But like there was a place down there called Shooters. Okay. You know Shooters or no? You've been there 12 years, you don't know shooters? If it's a bar, I don't it's drink. It's on the marina. Oh, you never drank? I went down there to go to treatment. Well, it's a pretty well-known place if you drink. I don't drink. Shooters, it's like a, you know. But anyway, so we went to shooters, and I did drink, and we drank, you know, waiting for our flights. You know, we had four hours to get to the airport, so let's go to shooters. You know, the first time they said, you know, we started drinking, then the guy, the owner came up and asked me if I wanted to be a judge in a bikini contest. I'm like, Ooh. fuck yeah. <laughs> you know, ske- reschedule the flight rescheduled the flight the next day so I could be a judge at the bikini contest. Woke up with a hungover, didn't feel real like flying. Schedule it, went down to shooters. Like, dude, we just kept trying to get out of town. Shooters kept you there. Yeah, we just kept freaking partying. Well, that's just because Fort Lauderdale is a cool city. It is. My, my wife's born and raised there 40, 40 years. So so you built that up to $33 million in revenue. You almost sold it, and then these lawsuits kicked you in the dick? Yeah, so we were um, – I, I didn't even know – it was my first time ever being an entrepreneur, literally, and building a business. So I had had it for the company, my wife and I, we had a third partner. We had had it for about seven and a half years. And I was going to get a mortgage on a home I was buying. And the, the guy that was getting me the mortgage, he's like, dude, what kind of a business do you run? He's like, this thing is a cash cow. And he's now a good friend of mine today. Um, and he put us in touch with uh, a, a broker that puts deals together to, to sell companies. And uh, we spent a year and a half doing a structure of the company, getting all the paperwork right, setting trust and stuff up for when we were to exit because we knew it was going to be a sizable amount of money. And uh, got everything good. Broker sent the package out to like 300 private equity firms. And uh, we were getting amazing feedback and offers. And we finally landed on, so we, we signed an LOI, letter of intent, for to sell 51% of the business for $54 million. They were going to keep me on for a year and a half to make, make sure the sales stayed where they were at. And uh, we were, we had 60 days. We already had a closing date and everything. They did their due diligence. We were waiting for closing. And um, I was flying into Chicago to go see my family. Well, how are you feeling? I was. It was the American dream, man. Like you thought, hey, dude, you're you're already spending it, aren't you? Of course. Me and my wife were pulling the kids out of school, going to Hawaii. I mean, ten years prior to that, I was smoking crack in Chicago. You know, couldn't couldn't pay to have ten myself. years. What do you think? Ten years ago, I was forty four. If I was, I was probably smoking crack at 24. <laughs> you, but, were, you were smoking crack at 34? No, 28. 28, man. Well, it's more than 10 years ago. Well, this is going back four years ago. When I was getting ready to 10 sell. years earlier, you were smoking yeah, crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, and literally smoking crack or are you uh, just being funny? No, literally smoking crack. Dude, that shit gets you. It had me jumping out of, of windows in my underwear and- 
thinking the college students in Madison were. I was I was out of my mind. Well, dude, yeah. it'll take you out of your mind. Yeah, yeah. How long did you smoke for? From uh, twenty three to twenty eight years old, I was smoking crack. Dude, you were a junkie. Man. I was bad. You'd steal, fucking do anything to get money. It was. You? It was. You ever heard the thing? You never hear a crackhead say it's too expensive. No, I've never heard that. Well, I always say you never like you talk to a crackhead that has no money. Yeah. Well, that was me, man. I know, but you continued to get cracked. Didn't of course, you? you didn't give a fuck how much it was or where. Oh, where, so how I got money. it? Yeah, it's like uh, you're getting cracked. Yeah, like if everybody applied that to life and success, that same drive, dude, everybody'd be successful. So, I got clean at 28, and for me, it was Who got you clean. It was it was me. It was me. Well, I tried. Kind of kind of has to be, doesn't it? A hundred percent. But I mean, did anyone did like what what caused you to do that? So for for three years, I was trying to get clean to save jobs, family, girlfriends, all that shit, and because they were threatening you. Yeah, and um, I can't even believe you had a girlfriend if you're a crackhead. Well, dude. at the end, I didn't have anything. I mean, nothing. It was. But I mean, your your teeth and your skin, like you don't look like a crackhead. What did you look like then? So I was a hundred. Uh, my last run, Brad. It was eight days of me just running. I, I had myself locked in a room. The dope man, I was living in Chicago. Dope man would circle the back door. I, I, had, uh, I got $3,500 out of my annuity from the union because I was a union carpenter, but I was blackballed from all the companies. No one would hire me. So That's so because you're a crackhead. I was, I was a crackhead, man. And everybody knew it. Everyone knew it. I was the only one that didn't see it at the time. And I had 35, what I'm getting at is I had $3,500. I was able to get out of my annuity. And for eight days, I smoked crack in a bedroom. And uh, on the eighth day, I had, uh, I heard the SWAT team show up, helicopters, the police dogs. I'm I'm getting there. There's a punchline to this. And uh, I heard ambulance kick in the front door. Uh, they brought the stretcher down the hallway. My mom was out there crying, saying, leave him alone. He's dead. There's no reason to go in there and revive him. My brother was out there crying, saying, let me go in there and, and help. And uh, the paramedics on three said, we're going to kick the door and go in. And on two, they said, one, two. I, I opened the door and I was standing in a hallway by myself in my underwear. I hallucinated all of it. And I haven't used since that day. It was, it was, uh, I got it tattooed on my knuckles, August 9th of 2009. Well, I question that you hallucinated it. Okay. I heard all of it. Sleep deprived. Dude, I think, I, I think what you saw was, was the, a glimpse of the future. hundred percent. I know it was. It wasn't a hallucination. Right. It was, it was a, I, it I was a premonition. That word. It was a premonition. I couldn't agree more with you. I couldn't agree more with you. And I have to stop using the word hallucinating because I knew that day I had tried getting clean multiple times. And that since that day, when it was so clear of what was going to happen to me, it was not a man, this might, ha it was so clear. I was, I was dying and I was 28, 135 pounds. Uh, I had singed all my eyebrows, my eyelashes. I didn't have any, my cheeks. You didn't, you didn't even smoke it right. Oh, well, I didn't have a lighter, so I had to light the stove and get so close to the flame that it was burning my face. Dang. I've been clean this August. I'll Dude, one time I was hooked on crack for three days to where literally I was looking on the carpet for more rock that I might have dropped, and I found a piece, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is a nice little nugget. It was so drywall. I, no, it was fucking Candle. glaze from a donut. I've, I've smoked it all, brother. But I pot, it started getting all nasty, and I'm like, oh, I didn't yeah. crack. Yeah. But um, after three days, dude, I realized, oh shit, dude, I'm sprung. And the reason why I did, I said, I felt that way. I didn't have a vision like you did, but what I did was I got my lungs felt like if I took a little tiny breath, my lungs were going to collapse. Couldn't it, yep. it, they? It hurt. Like yep. in other words, it hurt, and I was scared that I was going to die because I couldn't breathe. And if I tried to breathe, it hurt like bad. Yeah. Like I was going, if I couldn't do that if, oh. in this condition, I literally, if I went, it would break my chest. I, I could barely breathe enough to stay alive. Like I was going, and, and, and thankfully I just mentally stayed calm enough to fucking, and stay alive because it, I could not breathe. 
I've, I've lived like that, that was the last years. time I did it. I woke up the next day and got the fuck out of that neighborhood, never went back and like said, fuck, uh, I ain't touching that shit. Yeah. Now, some people, because I've said that on social media, say cap, lies, nobody gets hooked for three days. Because again, most people are doing it like you are. Yeah. Years. It, but dude, it's amazing that you didn't end up dead or in jail or fucked. Because usually, dude, crackheads, they don't come back. I... 100%. If there's anybody out there even thinking of smoking crack or you know people smoking crack, if I were you, I would run yeah. right now because I guarantee you there is no winning no. smoking crack. It's very few make it out. It, you know, they say it's jails, institutions, or death. There's no there's no win with smoking crack. No, man. So if someone listening, I don't think the bomb squad's crackheads, but <laughs> if somebody's listening and they're smoking crack, Pay attention, bitch. Yeah. You need to stop that shit under all circumstances. You will not win. You are heading for doom and gloom for yeah. sure. Right. So, but with that, started a business. Like, I got cleaned. And how you said, man, if you can put that driving uh, uh, energy towards something productive. Like, I went down to, someone flew me down to South Florida at 28. I had two pairs of shorts, two white Hanes t-shirts. Literally, that's what I went down there with, $8 to my name. Family at the point uh, at this time disowned me, not because they didn't love me. They couldn't handle my ass. And uh, I went down there, worked in a call center for one uh, year and a half, started my own business. First go around of, of trying to, to build a business. It just took off like wildfire. And uh, we were, we were exiting it. And uh, unfortunately too, I, I, I say, I'm almost thinking today, Brad, that me exiting that business could have been a, a, a pretty bad scenario for me because I went from being a, a, a dope head to making money real, real quick. And I didn't work a lot internally on myself. I was a, I was a guy that went from doing drugs to having a lot of money. And I was an arrogant, uh, didn't know how to manage money. Um, it was, it was a bad all around scenario. I look at it today. Like it was almost a blessing. I did not sell because if I did back then I was, I was a, I was a bad father. I was a bad husband. I was a, you know, I was, wasn't the best of friend. And if I would have, if I would have came up with $54 million four years ago, um, there's a chance I could have went back to using, I think my wife more than likely would have left me. And 100%. And uh, or look, joined you? No, man. Well, I know, but I'm just saying those are the two options. She course. would leave you, or yeah. she will join you. Of course, but she ain't staying with you I one agree. way or the other. So today, it's uh, when I lost that business, and uh, it took me about a year. How'd and a you half. lose it though? Because we got sued for tortious interference on contracts. And yeah. So basically, what you were teaching people how to do is break the contract that they made with their timeshare companies, and you were getting paid for that, obviously. Yeah. And and the timeshare company said, "Hey, these motherfuckers are tortiously interfering with our business, and they're good. Well, and sure. they're good. Sure. We're we were signing up a lot of people. Sure. Well, again, a lot of people want out of their timeshare yeah. when they hear about you know, yeah. when they realize it's not as sweet and wonderful as they made it sound. So the you ask how but, do you but lose they can only get out if they lied, correct? Huh? They can only get out of those contracts from what I'm hearing is if they lie. Yeah. Because, you know, I know this guy that does the same thing. I know. He's making hundreds of millions. I, we, we know him. Yeah. We so, know him. So, again, he, did he start it? How'd you learn to do that? Uh, he, he, had, he started doing it about two years before I did. But, I mean, did you learn, like, by working for him and thinking, I'll do no, it myself? Just like any business I've started. Someone, you think if someone could start a business right now today and do the same thing? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's still good. Yeah, but you're... you're, you're absolutely going to get slaughtered with lawsuits because they're they're going to smack you they're coming after you they're coming after you the question is is can you survive it because i think i remember hearing this dude's story and, and he got whacked too but he won no he he the first time he's getting whacked real hard right now oh really 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 hard that's probably why he wants to sell but dude i don't care he's making we, real we money were at, we were trying to exit at the same time him and i well he's making real money dude and our our both our deals uh fell through but does, is he still making real money though Cause dude, like he's got a. I seen him buy a freaking uh, eleven million kind of dollar house. house I know what kind of house he bought, but that's he, one. When, when well, he had real money, dude. I know. We were both making real money. At the at the peak of it, I was me between me and my wife. We were netting eight million a year. 
That's real money. That's real money, dude. That's real money. What are you talking about? Anybody says it isn't, they're dumb. Right. Like if like someone's like Elon Musk wouldn't think it is. Elon Musk would say it's a lot of eight, money. Eight million is real money. Like, yeah, it's real money. The reason we and so it's like dry cleaning money, but n- nonetheless. It's real money. Yeah. It's for me, it was real, real money. That's what I spend on dry cleaning. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm making zillions. <laughs> Dude, to not think $8 million a year is good money, fucking real money, how much you making, dude? Right. Like, I had a buddy of mine, I have a picture of his of his Ethereum account, $249 million mm-hmm. in this account. Two weeks after I took the picture, he texts me it again, same picture, $289 million. Mm. Like, dude, the some bitch made fucking $40 million in two weeks Love just it. from the value increase of Ethereum. But guess what? He really didn't get that. Do you know why? Because he didn't sell. Right. So that's all perceived and temporary anyway. The next day, he might lose $40 million. Like, people don't get this. You know, he's got $250 million in an Ethereum account. The only reason is because he had $100 million and left it in there. Yeah. You know, and if, and if he left it in there, did he have the $100 million? Not no, necessarily. I, I was netting eight million to the bank, right? But but guess what? He could leverage it. But right. anyway, where I was going with that is, I go off a of tangent. He might say eight million is nothing, of course, because he's got two hundred forty nine million sitting in sitting in an account liquid, it. and that's not all he's got. Yeah. So he might be like, yeah, but I guarantee, you if I said, dude, hand me eight million dollars. Fuck, you need $8 million right. for it. Like, that's a lot of money. Then it becomes a lot of yeah, money. That's real money. <laughs> exactly. It's real money, no matter who you are. Right. Plus, plus when it goes right to Hip National. Did yeah. You go to Hip National? As in, uh, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Hip National. Oh, yeah. Dude, you never heard of Hip National no, Bank? For, first time. Right there, dog. That's where you want all your deposits made. Yeah. Eventually. Hip National. How best, we- Best bank on planet Earth. Right. Hip National. How we ultimately ended up losing or, or bowing out is my insurance company when we were fighting the lawsuit because they sued us and me and my wife personally. Dang. We had a third business partner and he flaked out, act like a little bitch, flew to Columbia. And what? Yeah. What do you think? Bus- flying to Columbia eliminate all his problems? We we did business for eight years. Uh, and uh, after, you know. Do you still talk to him? No. What's his name? Not going to give it up on, on, <laughs> on here. Well, but anyway, we, our, I've had our, my share of, of backstabbing. So this dude backstabbed you or he, or he just wanted to avoid a lawsuit? Uh, well, he, me and my wife stayed in the States to fight the lawsuit. He, he went and did his little thing. No, no, what, what, what could he have done? Uh, well, we settled. My wife and I ultimately ended up settling the lawsuit uh, for millions of dollars just to because our insurance company wasn't wasn't helping they weren't covering the lawsuit we were fighting our insurance company and the 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 developers so my last 30 days and this went on for for uh almost to, two to years. take all the millions you made there was a wise man and uh a, a, it was the first billionaire i ever met in south florida his name was jordan zimmerman oh and, jordan zimmerman from zimmerman advertising yes he sat with I, I i had breakfast with him one morning and he goes eric you lost that lawsuit before it started he goes figure out a number give it to him and go do it again. He goes, because if you don't give it to him, they're going to take it over time. And I ended up uh, three o'clock in the morning, one night, couldn't sleep. And, you know, I, I think my wife was uh, just amazing when it came to this lawsuit because she sheltered me from all the bullshit and she let me continue to try and go and figure the next move out. But uh, I, I remember it was three o'clock in the morning one night and uh I, I slapped my wife on the ass and i was like honey get up and i was like i don't give a shit what they want let's just let's just let's give them let's settle let's give them whatever they want i said give me just a little bit of time and i'll get all this shit back for us and uh we ended up we ended up stroking a multi-million dollar check to them and then i had to injunct we had to injunct ourselves from that industry so you know, for a year and a half, I was lost because when I, you know, we came from nothing, started making money. My wife's a recovering addict as well. And, uh, you know, at the time of that lawsuit, when we're making eight million a year and, you know, we now have all the houses, all the cars, all that shit. You know, I got a living in a seven million dollar home next across the canal from Bobby Castro. 
and I got a house in Chicago, a house in, in the Keys. And when your revenue stream stops, like I was scared. I was scared as a man uh, that now has a family. I've never had a family before. Uh, I started panicking. Thank God we, we were able to, to liquidate everything. We bought out of that lawsuit with millions of dollars. You know, we had like $4 million when we, we ended up bowing out of that. Um, and for a year and a half, started, you know, just trying different shit that didn't have my heart. And uh, someone brought this idea of the wholesale industry. You've heard of the wholesale industry. So someone brought the idea to me and uh, it was within 12 months, I found a model. It's lead generation and phone sales. So within 12 months, I uh, was able to do 2.6 million first 12 months net ran it at a 60 percent profit margin and uh back in the swing of things man so it feels oh. good oh so that's what you're doing now right now that and uh i i help people in in the industry with uh, virtual closing f closing deals over the phone you're teaching people this yeah where do you how do you teach people this uh, last year I was doing really, uh, I would put 40 people in a six week program with me where I'd come on once a week on Tuesdays and I'd, I'd, tr uh, teach for about an hour and a half and then do a 30 minute Q and a, uh, that wasn't scalable cause too many people wanted in halfway through a six week program. And, uh, I ended up just taking the, the recordings of it, uploading it into a, to a, a platform and uh, they now get the recordings of me teaching 40 other people. I give mm. them scripts, objections, rebuttals, uh, my entire five-step sales process, all that shit. Where do they? Where do people go to get that? EricKlein.com? Uh, you can do that. It's you. A lot of people just reach out to me on on Instagram. What do you prefer? Uh, Instagram, yeah. Instagram, at the Eric Klein, by the way, folks, at the Eric Klein. So if you're in the wholesale business and you want to, it, it doesn't, it's not wholesale, it's closing online. Closing any deals. I've done if, tons if of you're, campaigns. If you're selling virtually through Zoom, you're on the internet, you're on the phone, and you're selling without being there in person, this dude's freaking the, the maestro of that, yes? Been doing it 13 years at a high level, in my opinion. And you can prove it with W-2 or, or you know, 1099. Yeah, it's a- Income. I've made real money in this. 1040 return. Yes. 1040 easy form. Yeah. Yep. So, dude, your story's, you know, better than the end result, which is, well, now you're, you know, showing people how to make a ton of money selling on the phone or, the, or over the Zoom. It, it, it's like, you know, most people would never have come back from the crack, first of all. Then you freaking get cricked kicked in the dick from oh. from the but again you, like you said maybe it's the universe saying dude this dude ain't ready for if i wasn't ready but dude believe it or not getting 50 million liquid dollars up front it feels good it's like you know it's like having a big 12 inch dick you know what i'm saying yeah you don't really want one of those right you don't want one of those to actually use okay? <laughs> you, to show it's fun but you don't want one it could have been like where you got 50 million bro you were now a crackhead again and dead yeah I, and, I, and your story, right? I wouldn't even know who you were. You'd be somewhere in an apartment or, you know, on I a street. I be here today. I know it today. I so, know that. Today. So so maybe that was the way God's saying, hey, slow down, chief. Yep. But dude, you're back making it again. Back making it again, man. My marriage is, my my day one, my, my wife met me three days before I got out of treatment and she's been with me ever since. But you said she was an addict too. She She had four years clean before you before me and See, again to me dude that that's to me impressive why because dude you don't know how hard it is to break even cigarettes to the hair crack junkie. and heroin and all the shit that gets you yeah i can't believe the fentanyl yeah it's crazy problem. bro well dude who in their fucking right mind would even want to touch fentanyl on a door handle like, right like you're voluntarily taking that shit well what they got out there now i mean I, again i've been away from all that for almost 14 years now but fentanyl dude is like deadly shit of course. so why would you even look for it or want it how is there an epidemic that means people are willfully taking it well m most people ain't gonna understand most people didn't understand why i smoked crack yeah, but, for six years yeah but crack can kill crack okay. can kill yeah fentanyl kills there's fentanyl a difference kills. yeah Crack can kill. Fentanyl kills. Like yeah. you take that shit, boom, you die. Yeah. Now again, people say, well, that not not necessarily. That's not what I'm hearing. And right. again, maybe they're over dramatizing how many people are dying from fentanyl. But from what I hear, 
the odds there's, are good. There's people putting fentanyl on a door handle so when people touch it, they get sick and have to go to the hospital, and some of them have died. No shit. From touching fentanyl. Wow. Touching. It's like, damn, dude, what is this shit? Like fucking anthrax? Crazy. Now, would you take anthrax? Would you snort a line of anthrax? No. no. Then why would the fuck you for- snort a line of fentanyl? And do you snort it or smoke it, or how do you take I don't it? have a clue. Pills? Fentanyl? I don't know. Is it in pills? I don't know anything about it. No, I, I actually, I I think they, it's in heroin, isn't it? Hey, you want to know another way you can make a shit ton of money right now? What? Take all the money you are making doing what you're doing and open up another company for recovery. I almost Addiction. got into that industry. Dude, I interviewed a guy the other day, plus a, a guy named Mickey Mars. I think his name is Mick. No. I have a few Mickey, friends Mickey that have something. exited those businesses. Dude, they're big money. I know. You can make big money, and not only that, help a lot of people. And yep. see, that's that's the part people don't understand with entrepreneurship. All you have to do if you want to start a successful business is solve someone's problem. Yep. And solve a bunch of them. So, like, let's say you only get a dollar because it's not that big of a problem, but you can solve a million people's problem. Yeah. A month. So now you make a million months. a month. People are right. like, how the fuck do you do it? He figured out what problem to solve. Yeah. So that's all you do is figure out problems to solve. The problems you're solving right now are... People want to make money and fucking win. They haven't figured it out, so you show them. Yeah. So anyway, uh, after this crippling, crippling addiction, yeah. Which, by the way, is I think the most impressive part because that's hard to shit to do right there. It was rough, man. You 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 then get kicked in the dick business wise, which puts most people down. Came back from that. Now you're you're making money again, but. Where, where now? What, what now? What, what's your plan now? What's my plan now? Yeah, because you're no longer in that timeshare shit. No longer in the timeshare. You sell, you sell, how do you close virtually basically? Yeah. And then you got investments. How are you making your money? So it's, the model is the same model as the timeshare model. It's just insert different product or service. Yeah, but the product is, I'm going to teach you how to sell on the phone. 100%. Yeah. So the wholesaling model is great. That kind of runs itself. I'm still building it right now. I have my wife and a partner. So there's three of us that that run that that operation. Does it make a million a month? It does not make a million a month. What if I could show you how to make a million a month? Would you give me three days? Yeah. I already right, know. We'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I know the truth. When I jumped into this this wholesale model, I had zero intentions on really. So you weren't a wholesaler; you were just closing wholesale deals, lead gen and, and sales, and that's. But were you? But were you a wholesaler? No. So you weren't selling the contracts that, from the houses you found. You just were teaching people how to close. No, I have an operation, wholesale, a wholesale operation, right now in Raleigh, North Carolina. I got an office, closers, and an office, all that. So there are the you talking about wholesaling homes, yeah, which is basically a middleman. Oh, hundred percent. I can't believe I didn't know about wholesaling back in my day. Oh, last year, our average assignment fee never bought a home. We would shuffle the paper. Our average fee was twenty two thousand dollars last year, and this year, I as soon as the hedge funds come back, which they're, I. I 60 days away maybe as soon as these the the big players come back and start because we sell contracts to them yeah um well the big big big, where the big players right now where are they on the you said once they come back they're sitting on the sidelines waiting for what waiting for it to to what they believe is drop another 20 and then drop another 20 what's the bottom do you think i don't have a clue i keep hearing another 20 i don't have a clue if the, if twenty more percent drop drops out of the real estate game, people are like, ah, so what? You just wait. But that's the thing: people don't wait. That's why they get crashed. You can't be devastated if you're willing to wait. Like, let's say I own a home that was worth five million dollars, mm-hmm. and then because of all this bullshit, it drops forty percent, two million. Now it's only worth two point nine million. And everyone's like, oh, oh, he took a three million dollar hit. Well, I still own the house, don't I? Right. Now, if I were to be patient. And wait 10 years, history shows that every 10 years, your real estate pretty much doubles. Right. So if I waited 10 years and, right and sure enough, it was worth double, did I actually lose that money then? No. It was a temporary mind fuck. Right. I didn't lose anything. You didn't panic and, but that's and what's, bail. But I know, but that's how people got to think. Like they think they're losing because their value just went from $5 million to $3 million and now they lost $2 million. They only lost two million if they sell. If they bail, 
Yeah, if they don't fucking worry about anything and they're just yeah. hold on to that asset, guess what? But what happens is people now can't afford the payment because the interest rates went up, and they, which means you bought shit you shouldn't have bought. And that's why you're getting your ass kicked. It's not mm-hmm. because it's not because of the market crash. It's because you bought shit you shouldn't be buying. You shouldn't be buying shit that if a, if it, if it drops twenty percent, you're screwed. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. But anyway, so so so, what are you doing now? So you're teaching people that. But what do you what are you doing? Is that the only way you make money? No. So I I uh, have a call center where I I offer cold calling services to the wholesale industry. Yeah. I teach the cold callers um how to generate motivated seller leads uh i'm also kind of dipping my toe in right now into generating that for the the solar industry um i have my wholesale operation i have my own custom built crm uh Did you right, build it off high level or something go no, high level it's 100 percent custom it's not software you own the code yeah it's me and my developer mm. yeah where's the developer live uh south florida mm. yeah not Cool. Uh, uh, in India. No, no. So we license that out to the wholesale industry. Uh, and then I do uh, the coaching. Um, what else do I but do? Collectively, it's making how much a month? Uh, last month, between everything, I was at, I think I made 100, it was 167,000. So it's far from where you were. Far from where I was at, man. So how, but, how do you how do you plan to scale it back to where you were? Um, right now in the process of hiring, uh, three more closers in, in house right now for my, uh, mine and my partner's wholesale operation. And then the coaching side of it, uh, right. I'm, I'm refilming all of my, uh, training just so it's a little bit more professional than what it is right now. Yeah. More fresh. Yes. And I've been in the, the this model now for two years. I got some some better sauce I can deliver to the to the audience, and then uh, the the cold calling services uh, is something that I'm gonna put a lot more time and energy into as well. Just because I leads is the lifeline of really any business, so I just want to get uh, more people enrolled in the cold call services as well dude what do you think of cold calling i love it why in the wholesale industry you can be a sniper with your data that you buy like so when we buy data we're buying absentee owner data which means i know you own that house and you don't live in it because your taxes go somewhere else it's either you you don't live in it or it's just vacant so we buy absentee owner data I buy data that's got 20% to 100% equity in it. I can pick the, like how old I want the house. I can pick the area in which I want the house. So for a wholesale operation right now with interest rates have doubled, I'm going for the low hanging fruit. Who's most likely to sell their home? Well, probably someone that doesn't have to move their family out of it. I'll kick a tenant out that's paying under market rent for, for my investment property. So we just buy a shit ton of absentee owner data. We pop into different markets throughout the U S and it's been our number one for us. We use, we do PPC and cold calling, but man, cold calling is everyone says it's dead. It is not dead. Hmm. Uh, I don't preach that it's dead. I preach that you should learn it and you should be good at it, but I don't uh, encourage people to do it because in my mind, the only reason you need to cold call is because you don't know how to market. So I would not teach them how to cold call. I'd teach them how to market. Why? Because if you market, you don't need to cold call. Market for motive, people that want to sell their homes. Of course. Yeah. We run PPC. Don't get me wrong. To me, marketing generates leads. It doesn't sell you anything. Marketing. Right. Marketing generates interested parties, leads, opportunities. Yeah. So, so if you marketed and you had a bunch of people interested in selling their house yeah. and, and those leads were coming in and you had so many, when the fuck would you have any time to cold call? Right. You wouldn't. Right. So I would say that's better than cold calling. Cold calling is because you don't know how to market and you can't get people to call you. So you got to call them well, when cold. When and by the way, I don't like cold calls because you know, who the fuck they'd have no knowledge of who you are, whether you're reputable, not reputable. You know, it's a pain in the ass to cold call is all I'm saying. So number one, I would advise you better learn how to do it because yeah. if you have to do it, 
and you don't know how you're dead. Well, that's why I provide the service for people so they don't have to do it. I know. But then on top of that, if you taught them also how to market. Right. Where now they don't even have to cold call. Right. You got you got even better. A lot of these people getting into the industry are, are coming in with little to... I mean, the barrier of entry is pretty low to get into the wholesale industry. But, you know, to run PPC ads when you're not confident in yourself to convert a, a lead... It can be scary for somebody. I mean, I but can't. not you. How much do you spend a month advertising? About forty grand. So you spent forty grand, and how much is the return? Hundred and change. You said no. This month we'll do almost three hundred grand. So that right there is we almost do, to ten times. But we do twenty in cold call, and I spend twenty in PPC. I know, but those of course. that forty G's return three hundred. Yeah, yeah. So that's almost ten x the return. Right. Right. Which is a let's say nine to one ROAS. Yeah. And if anybody can get a nine to one ROAS, you put money there. Of course. And so in other words, if I were coaching you, I would say, Eric. Double down. That's, yeah, if that's true. It is How true. much did you spend on ads? You say, we spent 40. Yeah. This month, spend 80. Right. To see if that ROAS stays the same, because it won't eventually. It might right now, because you haven't even tapped the market. You can scale that bitch up so fast. All you got to do is increase the freaking ad spend. Yep. Because right now you spent 40, got back 90 or 300. Tomorrow you can spend 80 and only get back 360. Yeah. It's... Well, if that's the case, you lost 20 Gs you didn't need to lose. You would scale that back down to the 40 and say that one's capped. That's one line in the sand. Yeah. Or one line in the water. And then you say, okay, let me get some other campaigns going. Yep. I agree. I think the what we'll close on, it's like 287 this month. Yeah. Which again is, all, is, is on the way to where you were. Of course, man. You think you're going to get back very quick? I think I will exceed, Brad, where I was at because this is uh, one thing that I learned when going through that experience, now I can call it, is uh, I had all my eggs in one basket. I had one revenue stream, and I told uh, something I've told my wife is um, we'll never have just one, one way of money. We will have multiple ways to get money. And that's what I'm doing. My wife and I are doing different this time is we have we have multiple revenue streams. Now, where do you guys live full time? Raleigh, Florida? North Carolina. Raleigh. Just moved there two years ago from South Florida. I hear it's wonderful. It's amazing, man. Is it? I love it. Everyone says that about it. It is. I never what about thought. Charlotte? Charlotte's cool. I mean, I've only been there twice, but uh, Raleigh, we're about 25 minutes outside of Raleigh, North Carolina. We're still out in the country a little bit. Uh, there's like, they're popping up newer neighborhoods in the middle of the country. So we're in one of those right now, five, six, seven, eight years is probably not going to be like that, but people are nice. Southern hospitality, no horn, uh, honking horns and crazy shit. Traffic's great. It's amazing. Lakes all over. Just bought a boat for the first time. I got a Malibu boat. We go cruising on. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, humid though, isn't it? No. No. North Carolina is not well, humid. Florida's humid. Yeah, but North Carolina is not humid. No. I don't not when I've been in in uh South Florida for 12 years. Well, that's humid. That's humid as shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be that humid. <laughs> so so listen, how can the bomb squad help you? How can the bomb squad yeah, help? How can they help you? Like blow up, stay straight, whatever the case may be. Um man, so if if you're looking for I've been closing deals over a telephone for almost 14 years. I got over a hundred million in real sales uh, that myself or my team have, have closed. I got it's, do I want to say it's the best uh, system sales system out there? It's pretty freaking good, man. So if you are struggling uh, closing deals over the phone and which you there are a lot of people which are a ton and uh, I prefer to do over the phone. I can reach way more people um, rather than going and driving and trying to, you know, knock doors or whatever. So if you're struggling with that, get a hold of me, follow me. If you like the way I move and you like my style, I'll help you out. That's it. Boom. I'm forgetting the old bombs. Well, dude, appreciate you coming in. Appreciate you. Folks, theericklein.com or follow him at the Eric Klein. Remember, just because you're down don't mean you need to stay down. Right? Couldn't agree more, man. And until next time, keep it real.
It's because I decided that I wanted to have a better life and I deserved it. I gave myself permission to have it, but I knew I was going to have to earn it and work hard for it. And here's the cool thing. When you start working really hard, Brad, all this stuff starts to become normal and natural. And in the beginning, it's new. So it's a lot of friction, right? It's a lot of new habits. Dude, would they take 30, 60 days to make a habit? And 60 days from now, guess what? This isn't a new habit you're trying to create. This is you.